This car is the most honest car you've ever seen. It's been a dream ever since I've had it. The first time I heard that engine screaming, I thought, I gotta have one of those. For me, the cars have personality. What's great about a BMW Classic is the community that surrounds it. When you listen to that, <laughs> that's why we're here. Welcome to Classic Heart, the BMW Group Classic Podcast. I'm JP, and I'm looking forward to today's conversation with Lucy and Colin from England. They are a dream team that has fulfilled its dream job. They have established their own garage called Custom Colors to repair, restore, and pain cars. But also, they make amazing projects like their own show car E21 Group 5 Homage. So today, we will have the chance to peep into their garage. Hello, Lucy and Colin. Hello. Hey, Dan. Very well. Thank you very much. So I mentioned already custom colors, and I think you guys are the driving force behind custom colors. So tell us more about custom colors. Um, I started it in 06 before I met Lucy, um, always being a car painter. So I was working main dealers. My last job was at a Ferrari dealership, and then uh, I got bored of working with other people. So I thought uh, I'd do my own thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, here we are now. Very nice. Lucy, what have you to say to that? Um, yeah, that's that's really true. He does prefer working for himself, that is for sure. <laughs> um, I think he likes that he can pick and choose what he works on. That helps massively as well. Um, yeah. So let's see. So what are the... Are there any limitations in terms of when I bring my whatever car to you, I bring you my Range Rover, I have an old classic Range Rover, I bring it to you. Can we do anything? Yeah, we don't... Um we're not like a restoration like we take a car and like coach build it we'd like if you gave us your car we could put it back to how it was sort of thing we're not um like metal finishes in that aspect that's quite a, a lot of people get confused between restoration and sort of mold restoration we, we sort of call it mm -hmm. so we can uh we can we can do everything we just got other friends luckily over the years we work with which help us and do like trimming and windows interiors and all sorts like that so if we look at a paint shop, right, a paint work, that's the, let's say, the business card of every car. It's like the identity because that's what you see first. Yeah. Was this also the reason why you went into that direction, going into the paint shop business or doing colors for cars, stuff like this? Um, when I first, I got my first car when I was 12. So I've always been into, <laughs> I've always been into cars. My, that's my very dad, early. Yeah. My dad and his brothers basically got me into it all. And I wanted to be a mechanic like Lucy. But when I left school, there was no jobs. So that's how I got an apprenticeship being a painter. And then I was glad I did that so I don't get very dirty now. I get dusty. Yeah. So I don't get dirty hands. But um, I've always liked making, I've always built my own cars. So every six months to a year, I'll try and build my own car. And so it sort of makes sense to do it on my own be my own boss to do it myself rather than say to my manager, oh, can I paint my car this weekend, please? Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so course. I've always done it. And because we've always done sort of our own show cars, that makes sense. It's, it's always been a good advert for us, cars we've done for ourselves, Yeah, which is good. Lucy, how about you? So uh, we learned you're a trained mechanic or a mechanic by trade. So yeah. how does this start? Um, I started it while I was at school. So when I was 14, there was an opportunity to do a young apprenticeship. Yeah. And I did that, was really good. I got to get a day out of school and go to college instead. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that, did sort of start it for me, really. Getting involved with that really worked well. Then when I finished my apprenticeship, I found another job, which was Collins and next, to, next door to Collins. So I did a bit of both. So I worked at a garage next door to Collins and the opportunities of what I could learn there were really good a lot better than my actual apprenticeship. So I learned a lot there. And then I yeah. went, went on to work for a, basically it's Volkswagen, the secondhand side of things there. I yeah. there. That was really good. Learned a lot there. Um, but with travel and stuff like that, it sort of took, make the day quite long. So I ended up working back with Colin and that works, works best really. Get to choose what I work on as well. Yeah, I mean, the independent part is very important, but yeah. uh, I think one of the questions everyone listening in is now, how is it working with your partner? Uh, that's a question to you yeah. both, but Lisa, start first. It's actually okay. Pain in the ass. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think it's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm quite fussy. I'm fussy how things are done. Yeah. I'm, I'm very OCD. So whereas Colin likes to be as quick as he can, whereas I'd rather spend the time and make it nice. So we have the balance. Yes. Which is it good. sounds like. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> Colin, yeah. would you agree on what what has been said? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think because I am I'm mostly I'm a bit older than Lucy, so I'll be doing it longer what she's been trained. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think when you've been in a game for so long, you know what you can, can't, and where to sort of do that extra mile. Not, not being mean to people, but certain things you put more love into. Yeah. So we, we just done an Alpina last week. And uh, the customer was a lovely man. And he obviously being an Alpina, nice rare old girl. So we went yeah. the extra mile with that. Yeah, we did an old lady sort of listen mic for her. She just wants a quick paint job, tidy up. She's happy as Larry, so it's sort of the but the bills reflect what they want sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, Lucy likes to do everything like the Alpina. <laughs> so <laughs> No, I th- I I can say that it sounds to me the right balance, to be honest, because it's like also from economics and from the numbers. I think it makes sense to find the right balance all the time. But uh, it looks like you, even though it could be sometimes uh, challenging, it sounds like you have a bit of fun working together at least. Yeah. Yeah, in general, it's always good laugh. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> the important thing, right? So how, how large is Custom Colors? Um, at the moment, there's only four of us. Mm-hmm. But our diaries books so are most of the year, really. So yeah. it's not really, yeah, we're pretty good. I cool. can't, can't grumble. We do we do um, a lot of run in the mill, day to day work as well yeah. as the big jobs, which is good. Yeah. And the name Custom Colors is it like? I mean, we have to say uh, for those who didn't know, it's written with a K, uh, both K Custom and Colors. So who came up with that? Um, I think when I first started, I was just mucking around with names, and when we first started, I had a lot of American cars, and I, I built a few low riders. Mm-hmm. And so I was using House of Colour paints a lot. And so the colour in House of Colours is like my mind spell. Yeah. And then I thought, well, sort of, I'd like to do just that sort of work, but I can't because it won't pay in Britain, really. Yeah. And for those who are not painting their cars themselves, House of Colour, by the way, also written with a K, is a legendary producer of car paints. The company has been around since 1956-ish. If you're interested in extravagant custom paintwork with crazy colors, gradients, ornaments, patterns, and so on and so on and so on, of course, also for classic cars, you should check out their Facebook page. But it's also clear that it's difficult to find enough crazy clients for such an art form. So to both of you, what would be the major difference towards other paint shops? So why is custom colors custom colors? Is it this like legacy of also having created show cars or going to shows or to meetups and stuff like this, showing your work or what yeah, is it? Yeah, because we actually, well, again, the, the gentleman with the Alpina, he came in and the city came out, I knew what the car was. Mm-hmm. And I like said, um, well, he, he knew who we were and I just sort of melted with him and sort of gelled and because people know we've got these cars and we've built these cars and they see them at the shows or in magazines. That's why a lot of people sort of tend to come to us, but because we're not a big multi-owned sort of franchise shop, we take that little bit of extra care and love and people, unfortunately, get fed up at the big boys because they're just yeah. smashing work out. It's not, there's no care in it, unfortunately, anymore. Well, the quality's not good either, is it, elsewhere? Yeah, the quality's not there. But it's like, yeah, it's sort of, we, no- we noticed, like the Alpina, I noticed the um, center caps were corroding on his Beamer. Yeah. And I pointed out straight away and he's like, I can't believe you've seen that. He said, you've not even looked at the car you said about that. But it's just, I know we, we notice things and pay that bit of an extra attention, which is uh, what people yeah. like. And um, come back to the mi- Micra. Uh, what are jobs <laughs> that you like and that you dislike? So is there something where you say, okay, oh no, not that car. That's a pain to yeah. work on. Um, not really. I think when you've been doing it for so long, they uh, they all are the same, really. You just need to charge more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say, I mean, I say we, we do really take the same sort of care over everything, but I know sometimes it's nice to do a looking after an old lady and keeping her happy. It's just nice yeah. seeing 
Yeah, Lucy did um, a gentleman's Mercedes a couple of years ago, ceramic covered it. And oh, yeah. the poor old boy started crying. He was so happy how beautiful it looked. And he was just in tears. He couldn't believe how good it was. Yeah. So it's just when you do things like that for people, it's just a, a lovely feeling. But yeah, we just sort of, any car really, we don't care. We're not prejudiced about what you drive, as long as it's BMW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to that question next, but you said a very lovely thing. So, um, I mean, it's your work time, it's your job, it got paid for. But uh, I think the stories you just told about this uh, gentleman with the Mercedes, then the guy with the Alpina, uh, who seems to be very happy to find you, um, is this also like super rewarding for you if someone has like saying, oh man, I couldn't believe that this car uh, looks like uh, now af before I brought it after? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. And uh, Colin, you just mentioned it. You're working on many, many brands, but BMW seems to have a special place in the custom color heart. Why that? Why BMW? Because um, of mine. I was, <laughs> yeah, but pretty, pretty much due to Lucy. I've always been, I've always, I can't think of why. Yeah, I think first beam was of you, wasn't it? I've always uh, had Volkswagen. No, you had an E30s, didn't you? Oh yeah, I've had E30s. Yeah. I've had a few E30s, um, but like I said, I had lots of lots of American cars. Yeah. And I've always had I've, had, I've always had a Beetle, so I've still got one now. But yeah, I've always I've always loved German cars. But Lucy um, had a a Polo. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> and uh, it's like you got to get rid of that. It's bloody <laughs> awful. And, so she okay. saw uh, an E21, and we're like, uh, yeah, that's really cool. So we went and uh, we went and got it from, was it London, wasn't it? Yeah, it was London. And, uh, and it, uh, it was stuck on the drive. The brakes were seized. Um, and I drove it all the way back from London. Yeah, right, like that. illegally. <laughs> yeah, drove it back yeah. two hours. And um, then we done it up. And since then, it's like, better buy as many as we can. So yeah, yeah we've got, got a few now. So would you say that the community works help then? Like, I mean, the BMW community is very strong, like with other brands as well. Yeah. Um, yeah but this yeah. does also bring, like like the Alpina gentleman, right? The gentleman with the Alpina. Yeah. Colin said he kn knew you. So do you think it was around, like, more from the BMW community also? Yeah. Yeah, as, mixture. Uh, lo locally, we've got um, one of the clubs, and we've done a few cars now for, the, what, club, what, what one is it, Lucy? The, the BMW UK Car Club. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we've done a few bits for them. And um, obviously they recommend each other to us, which is really good. We've got an E24 we're doing for a at the moment. We've done an E39 M5 for him, an E39 normal one, and an E34. So he's uh, yeah. he loves his beamers. So, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's a good them. one. Yeah, mm. very one cool. One of our favourites. Yeah, but yeah, just, yeah, so Simon, again, he owns those. He recommends us to a lot of his friends. And they, they managed to drag me to a, a technical meeting at the BMW club and I had to do a talk the other weekend. Yeah. And uh, I don't like talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> so we are more than happy that you're joining us today, Colin. <laughs> yeah, I'd, ra I'd rather work. I'm not one for talking. So uh, again, we appreciate it because I think yeah, cool. we used a rare occasion that you can share your, your thoughts and your knowledge. And uh, I think it's very good. Uh, but Lucy, no let's worries. let's speak about the E21. So, how did you find it? Um, there's a, a website called Car and Classic. Um, mm -hmm. So, I sold my Polo, as as mentioned. I sold it for a, quite a good profit. So we had a budget, and there was a few on the internet, but they were slightly over the budget that I had. This one was closest to the budget that I did have. So, yeah. we're like, right. And first of all, I didn't even want to go and look at it because it wasn't the color I liked. Okay. What, was what that, colour was it? It was gold. Um, mm, and nice. I said, no, I don't want to go look at it. Don't like the colour. And Colin said, don't worry about that. We'll paint it whatever colour you want. So then I was like, okay, yeah, we'll go look at it. Went and had a look at it and it was pitch black. So as you can imagine, having a look at a car with a phone torch isn't as ideal as you'd wished. Um, but the usual interior was all mangled and gross. Mm -hmm. But it started, the brakes were seized. They unseized after driving it. And then I put it in a garage for a year just to save some money to restore it. And uh, so then we took it out of the garage a year later, drove it from the garage to Custom Colours and mm -hmm. the brake pipe burst. So I had no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> so to stop, I used the handbrake. Luckily, that was all right. And then cracked on with it, really. Yeah. Nothing too major with it. A little bit of rot around the windscreen, but sorted that so it didn't turn into anything massive. 
Yeah, that was it really. There wasn't really any damage on it. No, it was, it was solid one. Nothing, yeah. Really solid. The only thing, the interior was disgusting, so we pulled that out. Yeah. But for the MOT, it only really failed on, you know, like bulbs and silly little things like that. So we sorted that out, got the MOT on it, and then my OCD self had to replace everything. <laughs> all the brakes, all the pipes, all the hoses, all the oils, gearbox, diff, engine. And then it spiralled a bit more, and, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted a bit of a faster engine, but I still wanted to stay four-cylinder. Yeah. Because I, I like the E21 mainly because when you want to work on it, you can. You, you don't have to take half the car apart to work on it. Yeah. So I thought, I'll stick to four-cylinder, and then I can get round everything. If I ever need to replace anything, I can get to it easy. Won't take long at all. Um, and miraculously, a race tuned m10 came up sale um and it had everything done to it that i would want to do to it but it did have a brand new head off an e30 yeah so that that was the selling point for me really was that it had a brand new head on it and then i got that back and it didn't run right after buying that so that got stripped down again and the head gasket had blown so i got a multi-layer gasket to be a bit better than a genuine one and it's been fine since, and it's lasted so long. It doesn't burn oil, it doesn't lose cool. Oh, it's just so yeah. good. It, and it, it's on carbs, it's, it's got a big cam in it. Extremely fun to drive. Yeah. Not ideal for around town, though. No, that, that, I'm sure that's not the case. But I think, uh, let's speak about budget, because you said you were on a budget while buying it. Yeah. I think that budget has been overstretched over the time, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a regular budget. And then as the years went by, I sort of every year I kept spending all my money on it. And, mm -hmm. and that, that's how you do it. That's how yeah. it works. I've, you know, do those who listen in for not the first time, they know that I'm a non-mechanical guy. So if you put me in front of an engine, I can say, yeah, that looks nice, but that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm very like, I'm in, in hands of people like you. And I think it's always good uh, if you have someone who has made his own experience with their own product, with their own car. Yeah. Uh, and I think that helps always. Would you say that your E21 is kind of also like an advertising tool for you guys? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, 100%. 100%. My, as soon as mine was painted and air riders put on and wheels were put on, we got the interior trimmed in a, in a nice tweed. Um, took to a couple of shows. One, they're really fun shows. Yeah. Uh, you get to meet other people like-minded that share the same passion, which is nice. Met some very good friends through it. And we've had a couple of E21s in because of it. Yeah. yeah. And you learn a lot on these shows. That, that's what yeah. I have to say. Like also because there's always someone who knows more than you do about uh, a certain topic or a certain model. Yeah. So I think that's uh, very cool. But coming back to, to describe your customer. So we just already said that you have like the elderly woman, you have your accountant to become yeah. a customer. So is it really like that high variety of people? Is it is it hard for you to say, okay, this is a particular custom color so a client? Yeah, so we've got a lot of young lads. We've got a lot of very old people, bless them. And, so, and a lot of them have become very good friends over the years. who come to shows with us now, Yeah, which is also very good. And, so we've so we been on holiday with a lot of them as well. Yeah, so yeah. We literally in, uh, went to SEMA again this year. Wow. And some friends came and uh, friends friends through the cars. And would you say that Custom Colors has become also kind of a community rather than just a workshop? Because you described your tours you're doing together with former clients became becoming friends. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very nice. It's like a quite a nice little hub. Yeah. People tr pop in and drink coffee and chat and... So we, we've had a few open days. We've not done any for, uh, obviously, due to COVID. Years, yeah. We, we mm. try and do a, an open day. We, we have, like, McGuire sponsor us. So we do, like, competitions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's quite nice for people to come down and just have a look at what we can do and sort of meet other people, really. Yeah. Even the normal customers, you know, who just come in for a service and MOT, they, they kind of feel like family and friends in the end because... They always ask how you are. They ask how our daughter is, how the dog is. Yeah. You ask how their dog is. Nice. So it is nice. I mean, that's the real life community. And how important for you is the online world, such as social media platforms like Instagram or others? So you showing your E21 Group 5 Hommage car there, uh, which is 
absolutely thrilling. But let's talk about that a bit later. My question is, is Instagram part of your job? It's quite good to get sort of what we're doing out there in image so people can see how the product started, how the product ended, and then they get to see kind of everything we do. Yeah. And is it also a source for uh, research, like in general, the internet, or do you use this as also creative source or solving problems uh, that you have an answer for or something? Yeah, it is very useful, definitely. We we normally fly over to Munich and go to your museum when we yeah. need that in play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we come over for the day at Christmas for, for one day and have a quick look around again. Yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we should yeah. organize also a visit to... Um, the BMW classic uh, workshops and stuff. Oh, I'd it's, love it's that. Shut. Every time we come, it's shut. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd you love know. to. <laughs> My dear friend Benjamin Foss, who's really like uh, the one who's managing all the guys who are uh, in, organized in clubs and like being uh, fans of the brand. And um, so they created an event that's called uh, Wheels and Vice Versed. It's, I think it's on Sundays. I'm not sure we need to figure the dates out this year. But it's very nice because it's a meeting at the workshop at BMW Group Classic, oh. so at the headquarter. Okay. So everyone's coming, having vice versa, uh, like the white sausage. Yeah, yeah white yeah. sausage. And that's that's really nice. So uh, we make sure that you keep posted yeah. about this, but yeah. also look out for it on the internet. Because yeah. I went yeah. there for the first time, you know, being affiliated with uh, BMW, but not working for BMW. Um, uh, I was there, I was in Munich, and coincidentally, it was a Sunday, and so I was able to go, and it was a massive fun. So you see like, oh wait, that's the designer of that car. Cool. He's coming just with his son. Um, this is the, the guy who runs the bakery down in, the, in rural Munich. And um, a really, really cool people. I think you would love it. So oh, uh, definitely. Um, I noted it down for me that I get lit. When I get the dates for this year, that uh, maybe it works out that you stop yeah, by. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah, that would be, be me mega fun. And Colin, you just mentioned that uh, your workshop is not looking like a franchise. It's, it's not a franchise, independent. Um, yeah. What would you say also from the look of the workshop? Is, is that a difference than like all the famous names uh, out there which doing TV ads? How does your workshop look like actually? Um, we tidied the ups outside up because I built my E21. I couldn't actually get it out of the workshop. It was um, too wide. <laughs> and the original door of the building, I mean, simply moved in. I wanted to change it, so it was a kick up the bum to actually do some of it. So we've had all the outside rendered. It's all white with grey windows. So we had a, a big, massive new door fitted. So it's about two and a half meter wide, or three meter wide door now. So I can actually get my car out, and um, we're slowly doing all the hallways now. I just had a couple of friends in Dell to do some yeah. carpentry work. So we're just trying to make it look more cosier and nicer just a bit updated we've got um in the hall where we used to have loads of photos up of all the cover cars we've done and pictures of like, all the stuff we've worked on like, all the special stuff so people can see what we've done cool um colin we have something like called the service part of our podcast that means that we choose a specific topic where we think that our guests could be helpful with and uh, we try to work out of something that for both of you uh, works very well. So I would start first with Colin in this case. Uh, Colin, what is the do's and don'ts of painting a car? So if I want to pursue that career and yeah. I have my first car to do to, to paint as a work training. So what are the don'ts? What should I take care of? Don't listen to all these people on YouTube and Facebook who think they're car painters. <laughs> okay, that's a very good advice. Yeah. First point. <laughs> listen to someone who actually is a car painter. Good advice. Um, Second advice. Don't rush. Take your time. So patience. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, when you when you get in a flap and you start rushing, that's when things go horribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And it normally normally ends up on the floor. <laughs> 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 so some people can do it. Some can't. It's not as easy as what people think it is. Some of the colours are so awkward to actually work with. Yeah, it's, everyone just seems to think you can pick up a gun and that's it, do it. But yeah, it's, it's, there is a lot to it. It's not as easy. Some colours don't cover. I mean, there are already three good tips. And I think the most important one is patience. Yeah. Don't yeah. rush it. Don't do it because you will not, the result will not be good. So take your time. Yeah. Uh, as with your many things. Don't, don't scrimp on uh, materials just because it's yeah. cheap doesn't mean it's good. 
Okay, so like find the right materials. Yeah, yeah. Mega. Good. Now, Lucy, service part for your side. Yeah. You swapped your engine yeah. of the E21. What would your suggestion be if someone wants like to do it? You just mention it. Stick maybe with an easy one, accessible one, like yeah. a four-cylinder. Yeah. Um, but what is your best advice to choose the right engine you want to swap? That's just in case of your car. It depends what you want from the engine. If you want a more reliable one, um, a lot of people do the swap for the six cylinder out of E36s and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you want that, if you want more traditional age related engine for the car, yes, stick to carbs 100%. If you're using it every day, I wouldn't go carbs. I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, I think I think those what I'd advise really. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So um, I think that's very helpful. So uh, people who want to pursue that, uh, you can always reach out to Custom Colors, but don't do that too much because Colin and Lucy want to work and not to answer <laughs> messages. Um, let's come back to work. One car is very prominently displayed on your Instagram, I would say. And um, one of the posts was saying, why choosing one color? I think you now know which car I am referring to. <laughs> it's an E21 Group 5 homage car, which looks like super crazy. It could be definitely, uh, if you put it next to the art cars from the BMW collection, it definitely would fit there. Describe the car for us a bit more. Um, we went to your museum and we saw the um, Jägermeister one, wasn't it? And the M-Sport one. Yeah. And we're like, uh, I think I might have to build one of these. <laughs> and so literally as soon as we left, I started making inquiries. And I think by the time we got home, I'd had a kit sort of being made. And then we've, we, are, we got two more E21s. And so we had that sort of basis to do it. And then, um, yeah, I thought we'd better get and do this with it. Unfortunately, the, the kit was a nightmare to get made. Okay. It took over... A year and a half, I think it was. I think it might have even been it longer. From, it was the original moulds from the original car, but the, the gentleman who, who made it wasn't very reliable. Okay. So no. I, I had to drive nearly 14 hours to knock on his door to say, I've come to pick up my body kit. And it wasn't and then finished. And drive all the way back. No. But yeah, so that was like oh, half it was missing. Wow. So yeah, that was the start of it. And then um, engine, we didn't really know what to do with that. So we brought an E39 and then thought, how are we going to get this to work? So we cut the E39 in half and then thought we'd use that inside the E21, but that didn't really work. So then we took the engine out of the E39, so 4.4 straight sit, um, sorry, 4.4 six speed manual and then the rear end. And then we made a chassis mm -hmm. and then we sweep matted those into a chassis and then cut the body of the E21 in half, took all the floors out and then we hung the body over the E39 sort of running gear and then started making floors and put it all back together. And uh, then we had a rolling car. So yeah. that took about about six months to a year. Well, yeah, about six months I that took for us to do that. And then, um, yeah, slowly started uh, sort of piecing it together with the cars being sponsored by a few companies in America. Mm -hmm. So that's quite useful. Retta for made wheels for us. They wanted to sort of try and mimic the original sort of BBS sort of look. And then there's a company called Airlift, and they gave us all this air suspension for the car. Mm -hmm. So, so a lot of the purists don't like it because it's sort of not true. But we wanted to build what we want. It's not. I've not made it to sort of be a replica. To copy it's, it, yeah. It's it's our our take on it. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's sort of what what we wanted to do. A custom but colors we, version. We, we flew over to Munich a few times and took measurements off the original cars. The walk around a around a museum with a tape measure, <laughs> taking measurements of your cars. We never we never got kicked out. <laughs> and then um, lots of photos. Then fly back and uh, cut some more bits off and put more bits on. It's sort of trying to work out how the inner arches are and how stuff's laid out. But yeah. yeah. And then sort of after a, a good year of mucking around, it's a, a rolling driving car. Wow. So yeah, a lot of work. It looks like it. Was it like a, a Lucy and Colin co-production? Um, originally, it would have been, but then I got pregnant. <laughs> yeah, so, good um, excuse. A very good excuse. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I say we're working one night in a week. So me and a friend, Chris, 
we did my majority of it. Then a friend Dale, he's a carpenter, so he was coming in and doing bits and bobs of us. And then another good friend of mine, he's a, an aeronautic, um, he does all the wire and aeroplanes. So mm -hmm. he came in and started helping us as well. And then my son was sort of scratching around and rubbing the roll cage down and doing bits and bobs when he wasn't at school to help me out. And then sort of Lucy was polishing it and prepping it and doing bits for us. So it sort of, everyone was involved with it. Good friends, good laughs. It a, yeah, it's, it's fun. I think you see and feel that a little bit when you look at it. I haven't seen it in real time because, um, I mean, you travel around with the car a lot. So you showed it in Warsaw, I think, at the Out Race event. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see it around quite often. Um, and But, you know, it's looking just at the photos. It was really like, first of all, Group 5 is such a legendary racing class. It's right. The yeah. group yeah. is absolutely fantastic. And also we had... Um, Uh, last year, at the end of the year, we, of course, we were working also, uh, we, we created a brand Renmeister for Jägermeister cars. So we yeah. have access to all the original Jägermeister cars and we did an event in Berlin, where we showed also actually the, the elder brother of your car uh, yeah. a little bit. So, and I mean, these cars just with the body kit around it. And if you then look in the inside where you see it's very like narrow, there's nothing in it. Yeah. Right? No. Uh, it, it looks fantastic. So, but this, I think this particular project, has it a name? Did you give it a name? Not really. It's, um, I don't know. I, no, I, I, I couldn't mean, really say, I, I couldn't really use the word which could describe it on in public because it's a bit rude. Okay. <laughs> it starts, starts with a B and child. You could say it's the B child of the original. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not really, it's not really yeah, a name for it. <laughs> I think everyone who wants to understand what that means understood it now, so we don't need to dive further into that. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to say, I really like the easiness on, no, it's just an hour homage version. It's a custom colors version of a uh, Group 5 car, how we think it should have looked like. But let's speak about the paint job, because, I mean, who came up with the design? So I, I printed off some pictures and I was doing some doodles, and I... So normally when I build a car, I've got something in my head how I want to do it. And I see some um, renderings online and I thought about copying, sort of mimicking that. I didn't want to do it white. I knew from the start, so I didn't want it to look like the original one. Obviously, yeah, yeah you could, I can't do it orange. So it had to be something completely different. And I got some friends, Jamie and Josh in the server room, they're designers. I was chatting to them and I was like, do you want to give us a hand? And they're like, yeah, we're well up for that. So they, they printed off. So they did a lot of different designs. We sort of tweaked it between us. And then they printed off some massive, great big images of it. Yeah. So I sprayed the whole car black. And then we, we put the images in the oven. And we sort of we was copying the design they'd done. But in the end, we sort of just free ranged it really and just made up our own sort of thing. But it's sort of roughly along the lines of what they designed. Yeah. We changed the colors literally about half an hour before without a painter. We changed a couple of colors. And then um, just went from there. But I think the, the overall impact of it works. It's a, it's a bit love it or hate it, but most people absolutely think it's amazing, which is very good. And the comments we've had from it are unbelievable. Yeah. It has gone down really well in the car scene, which is good. Absolutely. Yeah, so so um, do you also race cars yourself? No. We, everyone says that we've actually built it just uh, as a normal day-to-day -day commuting car. Mm -hmm. It's built to be used on the road, but we've had fueling issues. Uh, Longman racing next door to me of doing a new wire loom and ECU for it. So once that's in, hopefully in the next few weeks, it'll be remapped and then it'll be just used to commute to and from working. That's the plan. Mega. <laughs> What a commuter. Absolutely stunning. I love it already. So when you so where's Custom Colors based? I think that's a very important question I didn't ask. Where about in the UK are you based? South England, uh, in a place called Christchurch, which is sort of right at the very bottom, near the Isle of Wight. Mm -hmm. So right, right at the bottom. So when you're going to see a crazy Group 5 car driving around Christchurch, you know it's either Colin or Lucy. So <laughs> watch out for them. I mean, that, what, a, what a nice project. But has also racing, be, because you said, I mean, you took the inspiration from, from the Group 5. So is racing for you guys, so car or racing, motorsports, motor something you're following or is it nothing you're particularly interested in? No, I, I've always, again, my dad, he watches everything. If it's got four wheels or even two, he, he records and watches everything on TV. So I've always been brought up with dad watching the Paris Dakar or the Formula One. So I, I do watch Formula One and Lucy does. 
we've we've been to Barcelona, we've been to Monaco, watched the classic over there. We've been to Texas for the Daytona in uh, Florida as well. Yeah. So uh, we've been to a few places to watch different bits. But yeah, we've always, I think generally if you're into cars, motorsport is part of it as well, really. Yeah. So yeah, we've always been, we, we've done track days ourselves. Yeah. But everyone keeps saying you're going to race the E21, but I think I'd be too scared it, it'd break <laughs> or damage it. Yeah, don't yeah, do it. Yeah, you can fix it. Yeah, sure. but still, <laughs> I mean. It'll sound good. You know, Eki Schimpf, who is the, uh, the founder of Jägermeister Racing, so he was a team principal because he was also from the Jägermeister family. And he once said to me, you know what? I th and he raced like he always said that he's not a good, he was not good at racing. He was actually very good because he, he did proper well between all the big names and also hiring all the big names. And he said to me when we were in Laguna Seca for the vintage races there, he said, you know what? I think old cars have done their duty. So they should also retire in a sense, in his point of view. Yeah. So he said, so yeah. do a demo demonstration runs, but don't race them properly. Yeah. I yeah. disagree a little bit with that, but I understand the point as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah, it's catch-22. Like we, we've been to good with Revival, yeah. Professor Speed, and it's nice to still... I mean, they are race cars. People say, oh, it's such a shame seeing that like a million-pound car going around the track, but that's what it was made for. That's yeah. what it was. Absolutely. So I think that's... Um, yeah, I think it should be you still, really. Yeah, I mean, it's no, it's no secret that at all the events, also like Le Mans Classic and stuff like this, normally they are highly prepared cars as well, just to fulfill yeah. also the FIA regulations. So I think they have less and less in common with the original when they were original. Um, yeah, but, true. And I think that's the point where I, I think, okay, then don't race it. Like, just leave it like this because... I'm sure that if you race in a, a big glitter engine uh, Bentley from the 20s and you would race to one who is supposed to be from the 20s nowadays, I think with the total original car, you have no chance yeah. uh, against them because they're highly modified. As I said, not because they want to win, but more because of FIA regulations. So then I think, you know, then stick to original and don't uh, abuse the car. But that's just one opinion. I think uh, all opinion out there are fair. Um, what's going to be the next project? Is there something in the making like the Group 5 homage car? I think we are. We do keep our eyes out for uh, an E46 M3 or an E90 M3. But I'm so picky that the colours and in the spec I want makes it virtually impossible to find. Mm -hmm. So I think we're just waiting for a good one to come up. Um, and then maybe I'll probably you, be OCD with it. <laughs> yeah, but maybe you use this platform. So yeah. everyone who tunes in, uh, here comes the wish car for Lucy. Lucy, your stage. <laughs> E46 M3 in Laguna Seca Blue with less than 80,000 miles. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, so, but, but, you know, wonders could happen. So everyone tuned in, please do us a favor. If you know, <laughs> know happens about that car, um, just give us a shout out or just contact Custom Colors uh, directly via social media or other channels that are out there. One last question, actually, I have. How does a day off look like for Colin and Lucy? Oh, what well, is a day off? This, this Saturday will be separate because I'm going, I'm, I got a day off and going to watch um, rally racing up at um, Sony. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be sat over Martha and see your mum, won't you? Yeah, I'll probably go to the, if it's nice, I think I'll go to the beach for a walk. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. If she has a nap, but, I might wash the car. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's what I do in my, my spare hour when she's asleep, is wash the car. It's it's all what you make out of it at the end. Yeah. I think that's the important yeah. part. So, thank you very much, Lucy and Colin, to spare your time with us. Uh, I mean, it's a weekday, it's a work day. You are parents, working parents, so really appreciate it. And I would love to see more projects like the Group 5. Please think about it. Yeah. Because I think it has been done so nicely. Thank you. Uh, hopefully we see you around at uh, some uh, cool events uh, coming up. Yes. And um, I would like to say when you like what you listen to and you don't want to miss out on any of our episodes, please hit the subscribe button for this podcast and um, follow us. And if you like it, also let us know. Leave some comments, leave some stars. Everything is appreciated. Uh, Lucy and Colin from Custom Colors, thank you very much for joining in our episode of Classic Heart today. Thank you so much for having us. Cool. Many thanks. Perfect. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. So, chill guys. Bye.